Ashlake. And along with my partner Johnny, we're renovating this 18th century chateau in southwest France. Join us as we hunt for treasures across Europe, for our antique shop and art gallery, taste the region's gastronomical delights, anchovy, peppers, and olive, create our own recipes from our land, and bring Chateau de Lamini back to life. All under the watchful eye of our sausage dog Abernathy and our flock of nine naughty sheep. It's all about art, antiques, food, and farm life in our French chateau. Come along and experience the art of French living. So we're on our way to um, chocolate capital of France. And um, it's an area that we always pass through. We never actually stop. Always sort of heading sort of towards uh, Paris or further afield to Spain. So um, it gives us a, a good excuse to stop and explore and have a little nibble. We're actually in the Basque region of France, which um, is just on the border to Spain. But what we love about the Basque region is that it's a lot more relaxed than other parts of France. And that's reflected in so many other things like food. And that's why we really, really adore this region. Whether it's on the Spain border, Basque region, or here in France. And we are really lucky to have all this on our doorstep. This is Bayonne's chocolate cake. And back in the mid-1800s, there were over 30 chocolate shops just on the street, if you can imagine that. Chocolate Pastel is one of the places I really wanted to try. He is a boutique chocolatier, and he has really interesting original flavors like basil, pearl grey. Vanilla, coffee. Cinnamon, mm. and mint. Do you have a favorite chocolate? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, Tonka. Yeah, it's like a mix between coffee, chocolate, and uh, vanilla. Oh. Mm. Oh, thank you. Huh? Oh, what one is this one? So this one is a uh, dark uh, ganache mm. uh, with uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate milk, chocolate, chocolate oh. milk. Mm. Mm. All right. I've never had a chocolate that I don't like. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so this gentleman here and our friend yeah. is lived in UK, in London, yeah. and also Australia. Yeah. So it's my brother from another mother. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so I have my drinking chocolate from the place that first created chocolate in Bayonne. And look at this beautiful oil painting. That's what we're drinking right now, mm. Little, hundreds of years later. <laughs> and that lovely foam on top. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting and fun to go to a place with such history. You know, you think of chocolate and you think of bigger cities, but the fact that this little Basque town mm -hmm. sort of created chocolate and made it famous in France is, I think, a, a little gem. It's a little secret. We're in this absolutely stunning chocolate shop. I mean, the ceiling and the decor, it's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. You can just imagine what it was like in the 1800s. It's incredible. Wow. And the wonderful lady just gave me a chocolate to taste. Hmm. So I'm going to taste it. Mm. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> mm. Mm. She gave me two, one for you and one for me, but I'm going to eat both of them. Yeah, I'll say goodbye for that one. <laughs> this might be the best town in France. Mm. I want to show you something over here. So this region in the Basque country, they're also famous for Espliette peppers, which are slightly spicy peppers. Not too spicy, just a little bit. But they do chocolates mm. with the piment de espliette. It's also famous for cherries. Oh, black oh. cherries. 
Drinking chocolate was so popular in the 19th century here in Bayonne that just like today, you would have a coffee machine in your house. Well, then everyone in Bayonne had one of these beautiful chocolatiers. And as you can see here, I love this, but these are chocolate drinking cups. And the little section there is so that men's mustaches didn't get chocolate on them. And apparently there's a museum nearby and that's where these beautiful, beautiful chocolate drinking cups came from. Oh, wouldn't I absolutely love to find one of these at a Burkhant. <laughs> This one's beautiful. Took my um, took my eye because of the ladies wearing hats. See, Johnny's not the only one with top hats. <laughs> Look at them drinking their chocolate with the top hats. That is amazing. Wow. But I love how it was actually designed for guys with their moustache. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. So these are apparently from a museum. I'm sweating a little somewhat because it's very fragile. Merci, madame. It's très joli. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Ah. So that was sweet. The lady just um, saw me glaring into the um, display <laughs> cabinet and let me take a closer look. And it's actually on one of these lovely um, porcupines. Originally they were used to dry bottles in restaurants. So the bottles would be upended like this. And I must say that um, there was a time not too long ago when we had one that was just sitting in the lounge. And I think Ashley went away to shoot and actually joined her. When we come back, her mum had moved it up into the kitchen and started to decorate it with teacups like this. Okay, now it's your turn to try. Mm. Oh, delicious, isn't it? Well, I'm just waiting for an Oompa Loompa to appear somewhere. <laughs> I really am. And they're just so beautifully displayed in these beautiful cloches. I really, really do enjoy this shop so much. I mean, for those of you that know me, our library and part of the gallery is black and gold. So when I see beautiful bespoke um, boutiques like this, the lady said that for um, They've only been here for one year, but prior to that it was um, a jewellery store. So you can imagine all these lovely um, original cabinetry would be holding beautiful, expensive diamonds and rubies and pearls. Now it's holding different kinds of um, precious stones, chocolate. And um, it's got these lovely um, soft feminine details too. So if you do come here, you must pop into this store. I'm going to leave it to Ashley to pronounce it. Um, it's worth just coming and trying a little bit of chocolate. But you must buy some and take it home. Spread the love. Spread the chocolate. Merci. Merci, madame. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Madame, merci beaucoup. And à bientôt. À bientôt. We'll be back, my friend. We are back from Bayonne and we're going to our very close friend Steve and Angela's place for a picnic and I decided that I would bring a ham and cheese plate from Bayonne because what I didn't mention when we were chocolate tasting is that Bayonne is actually just as famous for ham as they are for chocolate. We've just arrived at Steve and Angela Hall's chateau, Chateau Kayak. And of course for those of you that know them they run the wonderful Tandem and Turret cycle tours. It's always a pleasure to come and visit our friends. We love coming here because their building is just so stunning. So my boy Steve, every Sunday he goes out with his French crew, his French friends on mountain bikes and it's off-road, very muddy, very dirty and that's what keeps the man fit to renovate this. Um, we were told to get here about 12 o'clock, which it is now, because that's the time Steve comes home. So I'm kind of loitering a little bit because there's nothing funnier than seeing a man in go faster pink and black lycra. But I'm not sure if he's actually inside or if we take a very slow walk, we might be graced with Stevie Wonder in lycra. I mean, how awesome would that be? <laughs> walk way too fast. Well, to the viewers at home, I know Steve's got a massive um, fan club. Um, we might have missed the window, he might have beat us to it.
So this is my boy. Oh. Just come back from the muddy look, look hills. Look at my bike. Look at my bike. Look. I thought it was supposed to be driving from. <laughs> yeah. I know. We have good weather. We want our money back, don't we? Yeah. This is not good enough. I've got wow. to wash it now. I don't want the cage of France. I want to have to wash my bike. Look at that. Dry all the time. But... So who washes you, Steve? Well, that, I think it's going to have to be me. Actually. <laughs> Do you get hung up and no, hosed normally down? Normally, if I haven't got visitors, what I do is I strip off out here, get the hose, hose myself down, but clearly can't do that today. So well, don't stop do. us. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're like family. <laughs> Why is that worse? <laughs> no, I don't know. So, we're, yeah. Well, that's why we put a shower downstairs. You yeah, see. great idea. I'm not allowed in the house. Garage for me only. Ah, uh -huh. let me yeah. see your back, Steve. All oh, that mud. Look is, at this. Is it impressive? Wow. Well, it looks like you had fun. Really good fun and actually really good speaking French with them and stuff is quite good for my French and um, you know it's integrating with the locals isn't it? Sure. You know. So you go out every Sunday don't you? Every Sunday with... Uh, for how, how many hours? Uh, we start about half past eight and then we finish mid... mid but always, doesn't matter what we do, this is something which I don't know how they do it actually. Is it sort of built into them when they must be born, mm. <laughs> like by midday the bells are ringing ah. as we arrive back at the clubhouse and then quick beer quick sort of resume of the ride and then we come you know we're back home so oh, is that right? and it doesn't matter really what happens whether we have mechanicals we're always back at the same time sure okay it's incredible i'm going to hose this down because if i let this go um if i let this go um, yeah. don't hose it down what happens is it goes like concrete yeah be harder than the concrete i just put in the barn <laughs> so what's going on here angela is this normal what we're seeing here Sadly, sadly, this is normal. Steve hosing himself down after he's been barking. Uh, I don't let him in the house like that, obviously. So, it, it, hopefully, he's going to strip off um, off camera. I hope. Well, I don't know. I think um, he's got a, a huge, yeah, well, I've got an audience. huge. <laughs> he's got a huge fan base, yeah. and the sun's come out. Be rude not to. Sure, you get a few more viewings of your blog if I do that. <laughs> can, I, can I dispute that? We can we can blur it, Steve. <laughs> So we're here at Chateau Kayak with the wonderful Steve and Angela Hall. Hello. In a minute we're going to go and find out where we're going to week. It's a bit overcast today, the sun pops in and pops out. So I think the consensus is we're going to eat inside. Drinking outside beforehand <laughs> and eating inside. I think Ashley's provided all the, um, the hamper. I made a ham and cheese plate and Johnny has made his little special Basque croquettes. That's right. Oh, so looking forward to that. Fried up, and he even brought, look at this, little yeah. fryer here, his traveling fryer. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. Absolutely fantastic. In fact, we might make that a prerequisite of coming All guests because. have to bring food. <laughs> and the, even their own equipment to make the food. It's brilliant, isn't it? Really? I'll just make pudding and cake. And, and, and we don't make it easy for them, because I say, everything's got to be gluten-free. You know? Oh, it's a bit of a trouble. Because I'm just a troublemaker. Look at that That's incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> Do you know, it really never... doesn't, it doesn't look like a there's something bread. Normally, <laughs> there's something got out of proportion though, isn't there? Something about it. Oh wow. This is exciting. I don't think we've ever been in this room before. We only let people in here after we've known them, you know, a little while. Like <laughs> special room. Space. Special room. Special friends. My eyes just caught this beautiful, incredible ceiling rose. It's beautiful. Mm. Alright, so tell us about this amazing bread. I'm pretty good at making all the cakes and everything, but bread is, is literally, it's just one of those things that eludes me. We just haven't managed, have we? This is our third attempt now. Huh. So it's the third time we've used different kind of flour. Let's see what happens. That's just. Um, so is that third time lucky, Angela? It could well be. <laughs> the other two were okay, but. This looks better. Bread. Oh, and it is bread. Oh my God, it looks like bread. Yes, it oh, does. Wow. <laughs> it's got the right texture. It's a little doughy, but... Oh, can I have that? Please? Yeah, you can have that. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. taste this. So Steve's been out mountain biking for the last, yes. what, four or five hours? <laughs> so this man is I famished. I need to taste this. Straight it. in. Oh no, I want to know what it tastes give like. Give us a verdict though. I'll give you the verdict. It does look like bread, doesn't it? Should I this could it change my life, this bread. Yes. This could actually change my life. Go for it. Could change my life. It's a bit of an awkward <laughs> shape, I've got to say. I might have to, I might have to cut it the other way around. I'm just have to what a, what a shape! Mm. I'll tell you what. Is that the best one? Mm. 
Right, I know it's just... the crust is Okay, I think what we might... Is that a thumbs up, Steve? Mm. Is that good? My well, favourite thing about the bread yeah. is just the way it looks. Well, when I rocked up, it was huge. I mean, we've cut into it now. <laughs> yeah. And I made a comment in the stone. <laughs> to me, it looked like a beautiful bit of Pierre French stone. Perhaps that was quite offensive to a, a professional baker. Mm. So apologies for that. What I meant, it just looks so, but it's so aerated, it's lovely. Tell yeah. us about the cheese. Yeah, so, so nice and cheesy. Right, okay. That's a variety of different sheep's cheeses. Okay. They all came from Bayonne, along with two different varieties of ham. All right, Steve, so you have to tell us what you think of the ham. Yeah, and which one you prefer. What's the difference in terms of? Why are they different? So, just different ages. Can you taste the difference? Mm. I prefer that one. You prefer that one? Is that drier? Mm. It's got more you flavour. Know, you normally like the drier ones, don't you? I read this really interesting story about Bayonne ham. There's this legend that the Count of Bois shot a boar, but he didn't kill it. A few months later, some other hunters were out and they came across a carcass of this boar and it was in a salt marsh. And that's how they, they discovered that they could, they could actually keep, it, keep the meat that way. Yeah, exactly. I believe that the reason that salting works is it ties up the available water, which all microbes need moisture to, to grow. But if it ties up the moisture, they can't, they can't grow. Let's go and make some croquettes. <laughs> oh, need to get them first. Oh. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> oh, so I've just got a dish. As the professional baker does, Miss Angela Hall. And how wonderful is that? Oh, there you go. Chateau Kayak. <laughs> Probably don't look half as good as Angela does. Johnny and Ashley bought me this for Christmas. How can I deny? Oh. <laughs> now I oh. feel that I'm ready to deep fry. Um, I'm struggling here. Can you? Uh... Yeah, sure, sure. Hold on. You think you're all right? Come on, you could do it. Come on. You got it. Four years in the Boy Scout. There you go. Voila. Okay. So they should be here. Oh, get into some sunshine, huh? Can't beat this, right? Cooking by the river. Oh, no, I know. We should really. Mm. <laughs> I mean. So it's just stunning, isn't it? The most amazing view ever. River right here. Tree house, chateau, pool, pool house, barbecue, outdoor kitchen. Yes. These guys have got this French living down to a fine art, I can tell you. We've got a lot to learn from you guys, Steve and Angela. We really have. Okay, so these are Spanish inspired um, croquetas. Um, basically, they're all um, potato and cheese based. I use four different cheeses in the mix. So potato and cheese with fried leek goes throughout every single one of them. And then I split the mix in half. Half has got um, ham that we bought in Bayonne chopped nice and chunky and then the other half is actually um seps and they're just beautiful they, they they're delicious they look like they're from an alice in wonderland novel they smell divine they taste amazing and they are just so beautiful so i do love my fried food um and ashley was very kind enough uh, not too long ago to buy me this little petite fryer very small and I think that was done on purpose. So I usually fry up about four at a time, as you can see. I hold hold get... on, somebody knows that you're cooking. <laughs> hey baby boy. Yeah, this is not for you today. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this wonderful um, fry gifted to me from yours truly. Um, it is quite small, but that's probably a good thing, right? Otherwise. So what should we do, set or should we stay with the Bayonne? First? Why don't we stay with the Bayonne ham first Bayonne. and then try the seps, I think. Okay. Right. So in they go. I need to go and get my timer. Four minutes and they shall be ready. Excellent. And I feel quite um, confident in this.
Come on, come on then, tell me what you're up to. <laughs> So they're in the fryer. Yeah. Fifty seconds left. There's a certain temperature you have to have this at. Uh, well, as you can see, it's not state of the art. Oh, yeah. I've got chicken, fish, fish, and fries. Where's the uh, croquette? Normally, I put it on the hottest. Yeah. But I did research. Yeah, right. temperature wise. We try different temperatures then. Uh, I have not, Steve. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, this man here is actually. Um, how would you describe your your work background, Steve? Well. I think probably um, I used to be a food technologist. A food um, technologist. Um, going back many, many years. Yeah. That's what I trained as. Worked in the food industry. Mm. But then I realised that I actually liked doing engineering more than I did actually sort of making the food. So that's why I went into food engineering. And so I sort of had a like, bit, bit of a bit of a background in food, and then a background in engineering really. So, um, which is quite handy when it mm. comes to doing things because what often engineering and food come together because you still need a mechanism like the fryer or whatever it is to make the, the sure. food taste good. So, yeah. um, I'm always interested in you know, things like that. But I've seen these things on huge scale. Oh, no. I've been to like Walker's yeah, sure. Crisps and seen where they they do, you know, make crisps, mm -hmm. you know, and they, in fact, their fryers are bigger than our chateau. Is that right? Yeah, huge. And, hundreds, uh, and hundreds of litres of oil. I, Thousands of litres of yeah. oil in them, mm. and that oil quite often they have to change it and mm -hmm. they have to clean the machines. The sh machines are huge, they have like hydraulics to lift them up, lift the tops off. That's insane, incredible. Mm. They are massive, yeah. massive, massive lock inside. So, what do you think about a little humble one? I think yours is little. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little one. It, 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 it's got perfectly formed, a little <laughs> and perfectly formed. No, it's perfect. You heard that first, little but curvily formed. But, it's per <laughs> but, it, but I think it is actually perfect. Or this sort of thing. Perfect. And actually, I, I hate to tell you this, but I've got bigger one than you have. Because <laughs> in my shed, I've actually got a, one that stands up freestanding. No. And it holds six, I think six litres of oil. And you're going to be jealous of it. <laughs> I will be. And, 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 and to be honest, it's great for doing chips, you know, deep brine chips, but it's empty and it takes a clip of oil, so it's not something you want to just like do what you've just done. <laughs> this is far better thing to look do. Look at this. They look amazing. They do look lovely, they don't look they? Great. Look at that. Love it. Nice golden brown. Right, brilliant colour. They look lovely. How do you know they're cooked inside? Did you, did you... Well, usually, yeah, it's they get refrigerated before I cook them. Yeah. All the ingredients, um, apart from the cheese, I pre cook. Yeah, so really just warming them up. Yeah, just warming them up. But I found four minutes is. Four minutes is the ideal. But I didn't hear the timer. Hmm. But it is beeping now. I think that's a little bit too much rose, maybe. That you can't hear anymore. Can't hear any. Can't hear anything. <laughs> well, you can't remember. See, this is what happens either. when you come to uh, Andrew and Steve's. <laughs> yeah. You get a bit engrossed in the banter and the food. And the drink. And the drink. And then and, um, you can't operate your deep fat fryer anymore. I can't op operate my <laughs> fat free deep fat fryer. Yes. Okay. Four your minutes back on the timer. Yeah. So we'll add another 30 seconds on, shall we? For the fact that it took you that long to work it out. <laughs> Oh, you got a love French rosé? Yeah. Uh, I'll take the time with me this time. They look amazing. They do, don't they? Oh, they smell yummy too. Mm. So, Steve. Yeah? Would you like to sign up for one of my oh, balls? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Be hey, John Gargo. Croquette. Mm. Would you like a ball? Are they all the same? These are all the same. And these are cheese, leek, and bayon ham. Bayon ham. Ooh. They're going to be very hot though. Right, okay. So watch. Am I allowed to have one of your balls too, John yeah. Walker? <laughs> Please Is enjoy that all right, my balls. <laughs> I'm going to go for that big one there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I'm, yeah. Crunch. Ashley it's likes to, um, Ashley sort of does this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Taste the cheese, taste the leek. They are gorgeous. They are really nice. Really? Do you like them? Alright, oh, amazing. Thank you. I like the crunchiness of them. Mm. I like the centre. They are really nice. Mm. Really good finger food. So this is round two, yeah? Round two. Thank you, Steve. Johnny, the thing is, right, you've brought those in there, I'll go absolutely yummy. If you, if you take if that I off take and you just literally go one, two, I know. three, but it Should we look, do that? Yeah, go on. Because then it'll look really like chefy. Make it look chefy. Okay. Oh, yeah. See? Even his face across the You've got an East End boy here who's used to match and jelly deals. <laughs> yeah. But I love the fact that this lady here 
like the ones with ducks in a row. Yep. See, now I feel yeah. I want to get a bit of salt and just do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. Go on. Fish. Angelo, what is this? We are having for pudding, um, sticky toffee pudding, which is a family favourite of ours. And it is made with gluten-free flour and it has got lots and lots and lots of sugar and butter and nuts and dates and it's yummy. And then even more cream and butter for the sauce and the toffee sauce, which I'll just, I'll just go out. Look, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God, that looks amazing. And if, if there's not enough calories, we can always have a little bit of cream. Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Pour those calories on. Yay. Oh my gosh. No, dates are actually good for you. Loads of fruit. There's loads of fruit in here, so there you go. Really? Good for you. you know, it's good for you. But this region's also famous for dates, aren't they? No, they're famous for prunes. Oh, prunes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all dates. Yeah. No prunes. Mmm. Yeah. Delicious. I'm gonna have an apple pudding. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, what's this? Dates, that's toffee sauce, mm. and that's cream. Oh, and that. Is a spoon to eat it with, my dear. Oh my god, that looks amazing! Have you seen that look in there? Oh, that is yeah. incredible! Yeah. Incredible. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, look it's now. not good for your teeth or your uh, waistline, but you know. Yeah, we've done uh, three hours of biking this morning, so I'll be alright. Love, you can eat that. Seconds. I'm sorry, children, oh, if you're watching this at home. I know this is your oh. favourite. Sorry, Adam. Sorry, James. It's Mother's Day as well. It is. <laughs> I need to text my mum. Oh. You not spoke to your mum yet? No. Naughty boy. Mm. Oh, happy English Mother's Day. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Uh, mm. Mm, that's gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, you're going to die when you taste this. Mm. Okay. I'm trying oh. to incorporate mm. the pecan nuts and the caramel. Oh my wanted. god. Oh. You are going to die. Am I going to really? die? Alright, I'm going to stop filming so I can eat it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it is soft. Oh my, god. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Mmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, did I see on your Instagram that you've got like three slabs of this? Yeah. This is the small bit. I put the other two in the freezer. I've forgotten how much it makes. Um, yeah, but you're not going to keep that two in the freezer, are you? Not for long. <laughs> no, you know. You have to come back Brand again. Animals might need one. Mm. Come oh, back. would you like to take one with you? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 it took me a while to get there. <laughs> Take it all home with you. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. Well, we are on our way home from Angela and Steve's. It's always so lovely to see them. And it was so nice to share our Bayonne ham with them. But I think the best part of the day was the fact that they sent us home with a doggy bag. So we've got a very, very happy Johnny Darko. And I think I am going to have to pull over because his giant slab of cake is sitting on his lap and <laughs> it looks very uncomfortable. Thanks for stopping. Put it in the boot. I, I, I don't think I can. I really don't want to. I mean, boot space is for cargo, right? I can't put this. This is not cargo. This is a beautiful, beautiful, delicious cake. This is sustenance and covering. I'm sorry. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's keeping me warm and um, the smell is amazing. It's making me salivate, I must say. I just can't do it. And um, I think Angela will appreciate it. Angela, your cake is not going in the boot or the trunk, albeit I'd rather actually jump in the trunk on the way home than have this sitting in the cargo space. No, this is staying here. I can keep an eye on it, because who knows, Booby might jump over and I'm not having that. No, it's fine. Thank you for stopping, but onwards and upwards. Let's go back to Lomini. <laughs> I think Johnny might need help with his cake. Need a ham with your giant slab of cake? <laughs> Step away from the cake. Away from the cake. I know you have designs on this. No, thank you. I'll be fine. I do need to get something out of the trunk though. why everyone needs a sex trolley in their boot. Not everyone takes home a piece of cake that's so big that they need a sack trolley. Not everyone's got a wonderful baker and friend like Angela Hall, have they? That's true. Okay. 
Almost there. Last step, could all go wrong here, we made it. Angela should never understand. Shh, our little secret. Angela, he'll never understand. Shh, it's our little secret. Coming up next week, it's Polly's birthday. Happy birthday, Polly Gray. You're one today. And there's mayhem at the party. Oops. I'm not quite sure what just happened. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And for exclusive videos and behind the scenes tours, check out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching.